where the hell did anyone find the name garbanzo beans? <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe there was I don't somebody know. named you Garbanzo. Can, you blame blame the white man. Blame just you know Western civilization because their their real names are chickpeas. We're gonna blame the British. Actually, mm-hmm. we're, gonna, yeah, blame, we're gonna blame, blame everything blame, on blame, the British. <laughs> just blame Britain. Their real name is chickpea. It's an it, it's a it's something specific. It's a very staple uh gr- not grain legume, legume out of yeah. India, and they have a name for it. It's chickpea. It's not fucking garbanzo beans. <laughs> Well, this is a subject for another show. In the meantime, good evening, passengers, and welcome to tonight's episode of Trademarks Trainwreck, a a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom, all the time. With me here tonight is, of course, Random Grey Mane. You know what? I keep wanting to say that they're Garbanzo Garbanzo the Great Beans. Um, (laughs) God damn it. And also (laughs) Sherlock. Hello. So, gentlemen, how are you this week? Um, pretty tired. Mm. I can relate. Mm. Same shit, different week, right, folks? I am uh, tired for a lot of reasons, and I am tired of people that have their noses sticking out. All right, sorry, never mind. Never mind, we're not going to start as, as Nick from Left 4 Dead 2 would say, I am so goddamn sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mmm, I feel that. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, nothing really new going on in uh, my neck of the woods, apart from uh, Critical Role releasing their first novel in an apparent series. Yes, you bastard who has a bookstore near you. Yes. I mean, Amazon exists, but then again, Amazon is run by Satan, so... He says, uh, he says openly, just purchasing things left and right that can't be found on, uh, at Walmart because they're fucking scalpers. Yes. Uh, other than that, uh, right off the bat, I've got a news article to talk about because it's related to what we discussed uh, during our last episode of the train wreck. Hmm. Sherlock. Uh-oh. Uh, you remember that article about the uh, woman who jumped into the lion's uh, exhibit at the Bronx? Oh, oh God. yeah. Well, apparently there was an article that ran at the same day uh, that your article did, and there's a lot more information regarding who this uh, woman possibly is. And apparently, she's done this before. Well, when she said, I've returned for you, yeah, I've uh, returned. King, I'm well, back. We, we didn't have the context at the time, but after a little bit of digging... I, I kind of guess she was just dating. <laughs> well, yes and no. <laughs> Okay, so, this is someone who is locally known as the Lion Queen. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to dig through the article here. Not a, not an actual reading of the whole thing, because most of this is reiterating what we talked about last time. Uh, here we go. Uh, there was a similar incident that happened in uh, 2019 with a uh, woman in a more subdued outfit. A woman jumped... Uh, jumped uh, the barrier and quote unquote taunted one of the big cats at the zoo, possibly the same one. Uh, that woman's name is possibly where? Where is the name? Where is the name? Here we go. Maya Autry, the batty Brooklyn animal lover. Uh, let's see. In 2019, ah, here we go. A woman who witnessed the latest incident said that based on Autry's Instagram page, it appeared to be the same feline fanatic from Brooklyn. Autry, who has claimed she is a reincarnated lion, was arrested on November 2019 near the Barclays Center and slapped with a criminal trespass charge for the stunt. Police were able to identify Autry at the time because she posted photos of herself inside the animal enclosures. I fear nobody. No animal, no human, no one. So no, I wasn't fearing of the lion because the lion loved me, she said after the 2019 incident, according to the station. That's why he came to let me... uh, That's why he came to me and I let the lion know. Lion, I love you. I... You know what? Natural selection. I'd say next time he goes, it's just litter. (laughs) I... I... I, I'm gonna go... Uh, I'm gonna go left field here. Okay, sure. Get yourself a get yourself a Great Dane, lady. Okay. Um, oh, no. I'm sorry. Okay, 
you know, <sighs> there's a lot more animals out there to love than something you have to climb a fence to get to. Yeah. I'm not one for kink shaming. <laughs> I'm not one for bashing one's beliefs. But I'm sorry, if if you are a human being and you believe you are you have been reincarnated and your previous form was that of a lion, and thus, by this logic alone, you think I will reunite with my past kin by jumping into the Bronx Zoo. Methinks you might have some screws loose. Methinks Again, you just, should be taking meds. Hmm. <laughs> Again, just, you know, let her, I mean... Well, as, as the... Uh, as Unpo- the unpopular, unpopular opinion, we've got way too many fucking crazy people in this world, and none of them want to, can either... Afford or people, actually get help. Well, the people who do, the people, most of them can. A good chunk of them can, they just refuse to. Yeah. As the famous Michael Jordan meme once said, Stop it. Get some Get help. Get some help. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to wonder whether or not she wears a mask at all. Um, oh, God. <laughs> who who Never mind. Knows? Who fucking knows? Never mind. <laughs> oh, man. Just, but yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty much all that's happened in here. That particular bit of uh, research to see if we could get any more information on who the crazy Lion Queen person was. Other than that... It'll be a show on TLC at some point. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, this is uh, <laughs> this, this is going to be... Li- like, we'll have a new spin-off series, The Lion Queen. I'm still getting over the goddamn... What was it, Tiger King? Tiger King, yeah. Tiger King, There's yeah. that fucking second season, even though everything that's been said and done has been said and done. Like the fucking enclosure that the Tiger King has got is being sold. Like it's done. <sighs> There's nothing more to say or do. Move on. Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah. You know, you know, who cares? Yeah. Who Who cares in the end? It's a. It's an over. You know, to be honest, show. the the only the only reason that show did as well as it did on Netflix is because it came out yeah, in quarantine, right the beginning of right quarantine. The beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone was like, I've already binged everything else. What else can I do? Oh, Tiger King. What the fuck? Yeah, whatever. It's the, <laughs> same, it's the same reason why I fucking got drunk while watching Frozen 2 with some of y'all. Ugh. But you liked Frozen 2. Because I was drunk. No! You got you were tipsy when it started. Then you kept watching. It's like this is all right. Then you went back and got more booze because you're like, I'm enjoying this. I'm going to get drunk and enjoy this. Yes. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the alcohol helped because I remember the first movie. I either way, everyone remembers the first movie. Yeah, that was the problem. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I broke out the booze to begin with. Anyway, <clears throat> side topics aside. I believe it's time to actually get this show on the road with all the preambling done. Folks, you know what this show is. You know what we do. You know how we structure it. We're Trademarks Trainwreck. We look at dumb news articles. We point and laugh. Uh, And somewhere along the way, we have musical interludes between our uh, segments on the show. One of which is soft, one of which is hard. And look at that. One of the musical interludes is coming up right now. We'll be right back to give you more of the content that... uh, that uh, we dish out for you in just a minute, folks. The content you both fear and crave. Yes. Gonna put it better <laughs> myself. We'll be right back with Trademarks Trainwreck here on Celestia Radio. I'll fan them all the time, except when it's Tiger Kings and Lion Queens. You think she was lying? Oh, God damn it, Raymond. Welcome back, folks, to Trademark Train Wreck on Celestia Radio. I'll fan them all the time. It's time to start the softcore material, and I've got a fucking banger for the first one. This one I just found before we all got together for the recording. Oh, boy. Here we go. Man claimed Big Snake invited him to enter neighbor's home at 2 a.m. Okay. 
the silence. There's, There's a joke here somewhere, but I'm going to leave it alone. The silence um, spoke volumes right there. I've got the mugshot right here, and I want I want Gray to do his uh, usual deal. Can you guess the substance abuse? Or at least the substance usage. Boy, I have no idea. Yeah, he's he looks perfectly fine. Mm. He looks insane, you know, but he looks perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm honestly I would say he's just a stoner. Well because he he looks um, kinda maybe. like that, you know, that tip that that atypical caricature of a guy from the East Coast, possibly New York, who just gets himself high on the weekends. Yeah, he does look like that. But there is more going on here, and allow me to tell the tale. It is a short one to start us off, but I thought it was funny, considering everything well, it's, that happened. It's, it's really straightforward. Of course it's short. Man, here's a snake. Say, hey, come on into your buddy's house, man. No, it's not even his buddy's house, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. <clears throat> you know, it happened in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and look how well that turned out for him. Ah, So, December 1st, 2021. The day of this recording, actually. A Louisiana man busted early today for allegedly trying to enter a neighbor's apartment at 2 a.m. explained to police that, quote, a big snake told him to open the victim's door and go inside. On a related note, Jesse Terry, 52, also reportedly told arresting officers that he had smoked crack within the last hour. Crack. There it is. Crack. crack. He doesn't look like a crack. Again, he doesn't look like he's had much crack. No, he really doesn't. Apparently, he's a lightweight. Terry was collared after police responded to the West Monroe residence of a woman who reported that Terry attempted to open the back door to her apartment. During police questioning, Terry, who lives near the victim's residence, reportedly spoke to, of his recent crack use and how he was told to open the woman's door and enter her home by a big snake. The reptile in question is not further described in the arrest affidavit. Terry was booked into the local jail for unauthorized entry of an inhabited dwelling, which is a felony, and disturbing the peace, which is a misdemeanor. The affidavit notes that Terry has a lengthy criminal history. And no, unfortunately, I... Oh, actually, no, I've got a link here to the affidavit. Let's see if the affidavit explains any further on this. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Officer, I advised Terry of his Miranda rights, which he verbally stated he understood. Terry advised he has smoked crack within the last hour. Terry stated a big snake told him to open the victim's door and go inside. I transported... Uh, come on, tell me... No, nothing else. It just says, criminal history, check, yes. If yes, details, lengthy. Thanks. Th thanks for the information, officer. But yeah, that's uh, more or less the article. What do you boys think? Again, I mean, it's not the first person to be told to do something really stupid by a talking snake. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was distracted. What were you distracted by? His hair? Oh lord, god damn it, Greyman! He's <laughs> Greyman's I... peeking ahead to future articles. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But yes, his hair, his hair is very distracting. Um, he looks like oh fuck, oh I, it, I know I... who he looks like okay. to me, but I can't say the name. I. Larry, no, not Larry King. What the fuck? Don King. Don King. There you go. There we go. Fucking hell. Yeah, you know he's he's he got he's got black frizz on his hair. Okay, his hair is is black frizz. All right, and there's something about black hair that's different than you know than white people or Asian people or whatever hair. It's different hair. Okay, mm -hmm. this is just something that's genetically you know. Uh, genetically a thing and if you keep it up it looks cool it looks okay mm -hmm. this man is not taking care of his hair no he he looks like um, he just came out of like a cartoon 
evil scientist lab that just had an explosion happen in it. Yes, yes, he does. Because if you look, he's got the gray. He's got on the, the left hand sides. He's got the gray the flex here and there. Which, it, <laughs> admittedly, it does look cool, but at the same time, it does look like he came out of a lab explosion, which is probably where the crack came from. <sighs> well, I mean, the CIA did create it and th- distribute it throughout the inner city. Mm. That's how we lost. Um... Oh, God. It's Gray's turn to forget uh, a name now. Yes, my turn to forget a name. Um, is it Harry Chapin? Harry Chapin? Yes. Hmm. Harry Chapin. Uh, singer from the 70s. Um, hold on for a second. Well, while you look that up, I think we'll move along to the uh, next next article. Again, this last one was short, sweet, and to the point. But this uh, next one, eh, this next one is still short, but it's still pretty dumb. And look at that. We're still on the subject of drugs. I present to you one of the dumbest ways to raise money to pay for your criminal defense lawyer. This particular event happened on November 22nd, 2021. And this involves a Florida woman. Oh, lovely. A Florida woman arrested that Saturday on a felony narcotics charge told police that she sells fentanyl to make money to pay for an attorney for a pending drug charge. <laughs> oh. The irony. Creative. Wow. Fucking. <laughs> you cannot write that shit. I didn't even read this particular article before we started. Wow. That is. Oh, fuck me. That is so fucking stupid. That's ballsy. Oh. Bold move, Cotton. Let's see how that strategy pans out. I fucked up that quote, but whatever. No, that's about right. Nicole Gregory, 28, was busted after a sheriff's deputy spotted her dropping a bag that held four baggies containing the synthetic opioid. The defendant did intend to sell the said substance, the investigator alleged. After being collared on a St. Petersburg Street, Gregory, Gregory reportedly admitted that she, quote, sells the drug for $10 per bump. Gregory then claimed she was, quote, selling the narcotics to make money for an attorney for a pending drug charge. According to court records, Gregory was arrested last month for selling methamphetamine to an undercover cop. Wow, you are stupid. You are so stupid. Oh my god. I mean, it's a creative way to do it. Mm. My big question is, where's she getting the fentanyl? Because you can't make that yourself. Uh, does not say in the article, uh, but let's continue anyway. In August, she was charged with possessing fentanyl and meth. Both cases are pending in circuit court. So, (sighs) in an attempt to get a lawyer to get you off the charges of possessing meth and fentanyl, you proceed to sell the meth and fentanyl. That you possess. Mm. Here's my big question: Why it's a it's it's a drug offense charge and it's a criminal charge that she should be provided an attorney. I I have no idea. I guess things work different in in Florida or where wherever this happened. If because... if if in Florida they deny her representation for a criminal proceeding, that's unconstitutional. It's fucking Florida. Everything about us is un- unconstitutional. Look at us, man. We we are we are fucking abominations that crawl out of the swamp and somehow evolve to be a, an offshoot of human beings. Ugh. I still say that I still say a good solution would be to get everyone evacuated from Florida who wants to leave, and then move all the other GQP people. You know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. QAnon, GOP, Red Hat, and Nut Jobs, and move them all into Florida, and then we wall Florida off. Yeah. No, no, the, the, you don't have to wall Florida off. It's easier than that. You tell them that there's oil along the along the uh, <laughs> along the state, you know, fault line. Okay, where it's you know right right where the state meets the rest of the U.S. and then they frack themselves until the state floats away. Well, do that before. Uh, do that after the evacuation of all the smart people first. <sighs> anyway, um, I'd also say we would. Add, I also say that like 
the Caribbean should annex the Keys. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> th- those those people aren't bad. Those people are fine. So so continuing on with the article, apparently uh, Miss Gregory here has been somewhere over the rainbow because <laughs> in addition to the new fentanyl rap, Gregory was charged with four other drug counts after she was found in possession of narcotics including meth, morphine, and oxycodone. Oh, she goes for the synthetic opioids. Okay. Yeah. Wow. She bonded out of jail that Saturday night after posting $18,000 bond. You know, I find really strange when it comes to the con- when it comes to drugs. Opiates are all a derivative of opium. Mm-hmm. That's that's the base that's the base chemical structure that um, they have created synthetic uh, painkill uh, high high intensity addictive painkillers like um, fentanyl, oxycodone, morphine, things of that mm-hmm. nature. You can also make heroin out of the same chemical makeup of opium, but opium is like no longer a. It's either a drug used solely for the super rich, mm-hmm. or it's like just used to create synthetic stuff synthetic stuff that's usually created by pharmaceutical companies you know to set to push uh, to push on you know the hospitals that the doctors push on the patents patients who have chronic you know pain problems but at the same time just kind of like where do these average schmucks get a hold of this stuff this stuff is again you have to make this shit in a lab it would be easier to make opium from actual Opium poppies. pods, or like poppies, poppies. Yeah, it'd be mm-hmm. easier to make fucking opium from poppies than it would be to try and synthetically create fentanyl on your own. So where do they get this shit? Poppies, poppies, poppies. Oh god, oh god, poppies. oh god. Sorry. Um. Yeah, it's. It, I don't know. I, I've never understood it. Okay, because I growing up, I knew kids that sold drugs. Okay, I just did. And yep. they would never, one, they'd never tell you they're a supplier. Okay, nope. because, you know, that could get them killed. But two, you never understood why how the supplier, it. yeah, why they would do it and how the supplier would get all that shit. Okay, right. because they were supplying like full neighborhoods of people with shit, you know, and just different shit. And it just, there's got to be, there's got to be a supply line that if we followed the money, we'd find it. Okay. But nobody ever follows the money. Mm-hmm. You know, so. You know, th- all this just reminded me, I'm about to sidetrack my own uh, podcast here because I just remembered a fucking experience that I had regarding drugs. It's a, it's a fucking story that I've got here. It happened. Well, they say after you get high, you eventually get the memories back. No, no, no. I, I've never taken drugs any time in my life. The the closest thing is CBD oil, and even that, pff, that's not drugs. Uh, the no, ex- it's not. It's ob- it's obviously <laughs> not. But everyone's just like eh, marijuana. But fuck it, that's besides the point. I remember one time during my uh, tenure working in the food industry, or at least at with the front of house staff of the food industry. I was a host at a restaurant and on that on a particular day, very like grungy looking guy in a hoodie rolls up to me, just kind of muttering muttering something to me. I could not make out what he was saying, but first he pulls out like this box that has a ring in it. And then he pulls out a baggie full of powder. Now, I am a socially awkward person. So when I am in contact with someone that I know for sure is a danger to myself, I just shut the fuck down. Uh, Thankfully, I didn't stand there like a fucking lemon. I went back. I went back and informed uh, staff and manager about this particular person. And uh, that that person left before management could, you know, get a hold of him, and he went on out into the parking lot. And as I'm mentally recovering from this, like, haze of what the fuck is happening, 
uh, one of my coworkers points out, hey, that was one of our old managers. What the fuck? Are you shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was no, one of um... our it was one of our old managers. He apparently he had fallen on very rough times. I'm not going to repeat any of that on the show for his own sake. And I wish the best for him. But holy shit. I had known that person. I had worked with that manager and he looked like an upstanding guy. And then he comes in looking like the 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 merchant from Resident Evil 4. You know, what you're buying, <laughs> what you're selling. And <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, he had the brass balls to go and sell a fucking ring and drugs to the host who is at the front of the restaurant. Fucking... Um. You get desperate, you don't uh, you don't think. I guess you know, that's, not. That's what happens. I guess not. Speaking of drugs, um, <laughs> the 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 musician I was thinking of was Jim Croce uh, ah. in the seventies. Uh, he actually was. He left a show. He got in a Beechcraft, um, you know, prop plane with a, another people, and the official. Explanation is that the pilot may have suffered a heart attack. Okay, ah. but people in the know say that he had freebasing equipment on the plane. <laughs> okay, what? so that yeah, so that there was there was uh, freebasing drug equipment and it blew up, oh, fuck. and uh, that that caused the plane crash. So that's uh, that's the that's your your ancient conspiracy theory for for the day. Mm. And trade to and trade just to, back to your story. The restaurant industry, especially in back of house, like in the kitchen, in the kitchen area, rife with drugs. Oh, mm-hmm. I, oh yeah, I, I know that <laughs> for a fact. I mean, fucking it, the the amount of times that you see people smoking out the back alone is enough. And you know, no, it, no, wouldn't no. Su- in like, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me that there were people using hardcore drugs back there in in high in high end restaurants outside of Gordon Ramsay's because he's so famous that any bad press would just like ruin him. Um you will find like chefs and like you will find chefs doing lines of Coke on the goddamn countertop where they're cutting their bell peppers. Granted, they're smart enough to like, you know, do that before or after service and they've cleaned everything. They're not that stupid, but yeah, completely right. They also like totally just, you know, buck the waitresses. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I want some, maybe I want some cocaine with my bell peppers. What the, (laughs) you know what? Reminds me. That's why it tastes so good. Good. (laughs) I think on that note, we'll move on to our final softcore article for tonight. Because, believe it or not, things are going to get weirder. For those who are uh, not aware, or are just coming out of a coma, it is December 1st at the time of this recording, so... The holidays are truly upon us. Uh, yes. I swear to God, if I hear that Mariah Carey song, I'm going to shoot someone. Mm-hmm. And so, parents and grandparents and what have you are now going out and about to get Christmas gifts for their kids. It's the first! I know! People are still doing it. In either case, sometimes when you go out shopping or in this case, digital shopping. Sometimes you find a product and you think, oh, this looks pretty cute. I'll get this for my kid. And then it turns out that the product is not entirely as it (laughs) seems. One of these stories. How did this make the news, though? This is usually shit you find on Twitter or TikTok. Is this this the Polish thing? Yes, this is the Polish thing. Yep, Walmart (laughs) pulls a children's toy that swears and sings in Polish about doing cocaine. Yes, I heard about this. (laughs) I had to double check and make sure there is video, there is video, so this is real. This is 100% real. This comes to us from November 23rd, 2021, from Toronto. An Ontario grandmother who bought an educational toy for her 15-month-old granddaughter was shocked when the cac- when the dancing cactus started swearing and singing about doing cocaine. This toy- Is Pol- she Polish? Is in Polish. She, she, she yeah, is, that's she how is. she- yeah. yeah, I shit you not. She is actually Polish. Like, the video- Like, you- you play the video, and she does speak in a kind of like, she speaks English, but it's a Polish accent. So, yes, she's Polish. Yes. 
This toy uses swear words and talking about cocaine use, Anya Tanner told the local news. This is not what I ordered for my granddaughter. <laughs> the cactus was sold on Walmart's website as an educational toy for about $26 and sings in uh, English, Spanish, and Polish. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing about certain products online. When you go shopping, not all the stuff ex is sold explicitly from Walmart. Some companies use Walmart as a platform to sell their stuff. Some people mm -hmm. use Target or Amazon or what have you to sell their stuff through their platform. This is why you can get your anime dolls off of off of uh, Amazon's website without a problem. Exactly. It's third party. So the cactus... Uh, sorry, I almost said the exact same sentence again. <clears throat> but Tanner, who is Polish said when she listened to the Polish lyrics, the cactus was singing about doing cocaine, drug abuse, suicide, depression, and used profanities. It just so happens that I am Polish, and when I started to listen to the songs and I heard the words, I was in shock. I thought, what is this, some kind of joke? The song is by Polish rapper Sypis who is reportedly unaware his song was used by the Chinese manufacturer of the children's toy. Because China. Uh, now I'm curious what the thing sang in Spanish. Uh, uh, I have no that's idea. That's actually a good question. It's about taking five grams of cocaine and being alone. It's a very depressing song, Tanner said. The Singing Cactus was also sold in Europe through Amazon, and in July 2021, other families also noticed and complained about the lyrics that many felt were inappropriate for a children's toy. The Polish artist said he planned to take legal action against chi the Chinese company for using his song without permission. Good luck! <laughs> I knew one of us was gonna say it. China yeah. don't give a shit! China is the honey badger of the world! China don't give a fuck! Nope. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, the local news was un uh, unable to contact Cypus and or the manufacturer for a comment. Tanner mm -hmm. said she feels Walmart should not be uh, selling the toy and wants a refund. Walmart told the local news they take this customer complaint uh, concern seriously. These items are sold by a third p party seller on our Marketplace website. We are removing the items while we look into this complaint further. Mm. Typical copy-paste uh, statement from the Walmart spokesperson. Yeah, typical uh, copy-paste statement from the, you know... Corporation. From, Beal from Beelzebub's this, asshole. <laughs> this, uh, this, this whole... You, you have anything else to read, trade? Uh, nothing much apart from okay. um, just some blurb. This, um, this reminds me of a commercial that ran... I I, I want to say about five years ago, five to ten years ago, okay, and it was a bunch of foreign speaking people people, um, who get in their car, and I think they're German or something, and they 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 play something on the radio, and the song is all fucks, okay, mm. and they don't understand it, so they start you know, but they start imitating it, and the whole the whole commercial was. You know, learn a new, learn a different language just in case, you know, <laughs> and that, that's what this reminds me of. It's like the, the, you know, the only reason this was actually really caught immediately was this lady who knew Polish. What are the <laughs> odds, huh? Yeah. One of the many reasons why I hate third party companies selling shit to make a quick book. The fact that they just go, we're going to make this cactus. And we're gonna have a dance and sing like those sound activated Japanese flower things. What do we make it sing? Ah, who fucking gives a shit here? My my fucking fifteen year old emo teenager heard this song in Poland. Fucking use it. Can we should we get permission? Nah, fuck it. Just fucking yeah. use fuck it. Fuck it, we're China. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Sorry, I mean, okay. One of the things that really does get me is that you know we wouldn't have this problem if um, certain governments and the you know the corporate the corporate giants across the world would stop you know bowing down to China and doing whatever the fuck they want. Like one of the big things that irritates the crap out of me, like um, you could you could, if you go to like an NBA game and you want to protest China. 
Like you say, you say you bought tickets and you go to an NBA game and you're holding up a sign that says free Tibet or China can suck my dick or, or uh, Xi Jinping looks like Winnie the Pooh. Like <laughs> they will, um, they, they will actually have their security go in there and kick you out. Yeah. And it, you'd be an American on American soil and you're not saying anything disparaging to the team, to the NBA itself. You're saying something disparaging to China. They'll kick you out because China will see that. They'll flip the shit, and then they'll stop paying the NFL to come and play games in China. Or, like, they'll stop paying to have their, their the game broadcast in China. So it's this stupid-ass stranglehold. That's why, like, Disney refused to do anything about the incredibly problematic issues with the movie Mulan, the live action one. And it's cause like, Oh, China pays for like all this, that we have China's got a a potential viewership of like, you know, double the population of America. And at that, to me, I'm just kind of like, you're enabling them a lot for money. (laughs) Stop. You know, if you don't want them to commit these horrific atrocities, if you want them to change and stop stealing your intellectual property and stop, you know, making shit products that take advantage of uh, your consumers here in the U.S., if you want them to buy your stuff instead of going for the cheaper alternative, stop enabling them. You know, take the financial hit and collectively tell China to go fuck off. That's the only thing that'll stop them. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I think I heard it. it. Hmm? What was that, Gray? Sosman language training. Yeah. And on that note, there it is. Oh, (laughs) I found that. I found the commercial. Nice. So, well, while we watch that, I think that's a good place to go for another musical interlude. So we'll. Yes, I need to refill my tea. Yeah. We'll be right back, folks, with the hardcore material over on uh, Trademarks Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time, except when Mr. Cactus tells you to use use your cocaine. Well... You know, I wouldn't mind Cerberus as a pet, but, you know, uh, at least he only has one butt. Oh, God. Yeah, think of the food, the food bills. Ugh. Food bills would be atrocious. Right. <sighs> Welcome back to Trademark Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. Time to go into the hardcore material, and where better to start than Walmart? Yes, <laughs> Walmart. We end the softcore in Walmart. We begin the hardcore in Walmart. Brilliant. It's a tale as old as time. Well, maybe not. There's a... Well, you'll see in a minute. <clears throat> a satisfied Walmart patron is arrested. A satisfied, huh? Well, you'll see. I... November... How satisfied is he? <laughs> Let's find out. November 22nd. Need another reason to avoid your local Walmart during the holiday shopping crush? Here goes. Whoever wrote that, fucking... You you know your audience. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fuck, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> A man is facing an obscenity charge for allegedly masturbating while watching porn on a laptop in the electronics department of a Walmart in West Monroe, Louisiana. There we go. <laughs> how was it? How did he even get it attached? I don't know. The laptop like, or, or those thi- Yeah, the laptop. Those things aren't supposed to be plugged in. Well, some of them are. Just to give, um, uh, just to give an well, idea no, they, of the display. I've seen this in Walmart's. Well, here's the thing. They one, they have to be able to demo the product. Okay, so the product has to be plugged in and charged. Yes. Okay. Two, they usually have these connected to the internet because all of the sales data that is used to sell the laptop is on their website. So they have a connection to the internet so that they can throw it at their website and say, hey, this is what this laptop has. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so these things are not disconnected from the internet. 
Not by a long shot. Well, I kind of feel they should be, given this. They're mounted yeah. to the tables, but yeah, they are online. So. Well, there's also, well, I mean, okay. I mean, it's really easy to block off a, a Wi-Fi network from going to any place explicit. You would think. You would think. <laughs> but this is not an elementary school, unfortunately. Or a mall. Or a mall. So. Or a, gov- or a government building. Hmm. So according to an arrest report, Alexander Pierce, 28, was captured that Friday afternoon on store surveillance video, hunched over a laptop with his hands in his pants. Oh, God. Pierce had been barred from the retailer since July when he was arrested for shoplifting. Moving up in the world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Moving right along. Hands free in hand. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> when a cop confronted Pierce outside the Walmart, he claimed to have been watching music videos on a laptop at the Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> watching music videos, eh? Well, in all fairness, he was getting his groove on. Were, were they Nicki Minaj? <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> While initially denying that he viewed pornographic material, Pierce then admitted he was looking at pictures. Hmm. Pictures, eh? Pictures. Pictures. Okay. Though he denied masturbating in the store, Pierce alleged, uh, reportedly told an officer that he probably still had to ejaculate on his hands from four hours prior. Oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> if I were the cop, it'd be like, give me a second, I need to get my gloves. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, I want to point out to our audience here the difference between the hosts, uh, the three hosts here. Gray and I are reacting as normal human adults would. We find the, dis- this, the whole thing... Um, cringy, amusingly cringy, but disgusting, and we feel for the poor bastards who have to clean up after this schmuck. Trade is laughing like a fucking five-year-old because he no. thinks, you know, bodily fluid humor is funny. No, 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 it's not that. Like, the whole thing is disgusting. But I, lo- I love the fact that that was his excuse. Hey, if there's splooge on my hand, it's because I ejaculated four hours ago. Well, mm. That's more than an hour. You should contact your physician. Uh, also, <laughs> also four hours ago. That's that's a little crunchy. That, yeah, um, that's enough you know, time for that shit to dry. Like that's right. enough time for you to have washed your hands. It's not going to still be wet. It's not fucking flubber. Okay, I, you got to ask. This guy looks familiar. He looks like an actor. Like he looks like he could be an actor's doppelganger. Sands <laughs> the hair. Maybe. It's something about his cheekbones and his eyes. Yeah, something about it, but I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you either, but you're right. He does look a little familiar. Oh, God. Whew. Mm. That said, he doesn't look like he's on anything. He just looks like a loser. Yeah, um, he looks like a loser. He's a fucking <laughs> loser. I mean, Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, not since I heard, not since that one viral video of the QVC um, thing got around about, you know, they were selling, like, I don't know if they were used or like slightly or like just standard or like they got them for wholesale from um, the hell's the name of that computer company that had the cow as its mascot for a while. Gateway. 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 They were selling a bunch of like, I guess, like gateway computer towers that they had gotten for wholesale or something on QVC. And mm-hmm. so the guy's like, yeah, I bought one. I love it. It's like, oh, what do you use it for? And he just straight up admitted it's like, oh, storing stuff, watching videos, porn. <laughs> <laughs> while he was on a QVC call while I was being broadcast live <laughs> and the and the everyone was like well at least you're honest yeah at least there's now that. I'm gonna have to now I'm gonna have to ask Mrs. Grayman because she does actually watch QVC <laughs> <laughs> anyway <clears throat> to wrap up this article Pierce who uh, whose address is listed in court records as a resident in Sharpsburg Georgia was booked into the local jail on a felony obscenity count and a misdemeanor trespass charge. His bond has been set at $5,200. Oh, you 
too cool. He, he must he must smell horrible. Mm. If he truly did that like four hours ago or whatever, he he has to smell horrible. Okay. <sighs> to That's, quote that one weird yeah. Al, to quote that weird Al song, "I Lost on Jeopardy." You're a complete loser. That's fucking going to Walmart, jerking your gherkin, and then to cover your ass, you say, "Hey, if you find splooge on my hand, don't worry, that's four hours old." <laughs> that's not fresh splooge. Don't 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 worry about. Don't that. worry about. It. <laughs> Jeez, you're fucking oh. loser! You're a fucking loser. I mean, dude. I mean, you, do you, you not don't... have the. Do you not have like? any fun set away to buy like a $200 MacBook, you can access videos and porn through the internet on that thing. It's like 200 bucks. Plug it in. It works fine. Yeah. Oh, man. You can tell how, you can tell how bad this is because I'm not the one laughing about this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cause normally I'd be the one, but I'd be the one giggling like a, like a, you know, like a schoolgirl about it, but no, not this time. This is gross. It, <laughs> it, is, it is, and I want to set the record straight. I'm not laughing because bodily fluids are involved. I'm more laughing because it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> anyway. Moving swiftly moving onwards. Moving swiftly onwards. To our next article. <laughs> and it's only going to get worse. I'm going to be laughing for the rest of the hardcore material because we have another stupid incident here. And it's a two-for-one special because it's a couple. Oh, and it comes from Florida. Fucking yippity skippity. We have a couple who had sex in a patrol car. Here's wow. the Wow. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's the Mile High Club and then there's that. Once again, bold strategy caught and let's see how it pan- let's see how it pans out. Here's the tagline. This is the tagline that got me interested in this article. Quote, "We should record an OnlyFans video back here." Did they actually say that? <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> November 22nd, while seated in the rear of a Florida Highway Patrol cruiser, Summer Watkins had a brilliant idea. Quote, Baby, we should record an OnlyFans video from back here. The 24-year-old yelled to her male companion who would soon join her in the squad car. Wow, that was her idea. That's okay. Alrighty then. <sighs> Watkins and Jordan Noah, 24 were seated in the police vehicle after Noah's BMW was pulled over early th- uh, that Thursday since he was driving on a suspended license. Cops planned to on trans- Thanksgiving. Mm. Cops planned to transport the duo to the nearby Shell station in Naples where they could quote make arrangements to get home. When Noah joined her in the patrol car, Watkins asked a cop here we fucking go. What if I suck his dick back here? The officer replied that she could not do that. Watkins, however, persisted. <laughs> Can I suck his dick back here? The officer responded, no. <laughs> when the cop closed the vehicle's rear door and walked away for a few minutes, Watkins and Noah neither of whom were handcuffed, engaged in sexual activity that was recorded by the prisoner compartment camera. (laughs) Noah exposed his genitals. Watkins began performing oral sex on him. Watkins, cops noted, can be heard saying fuck 5-0 while giving oral sex. Or while getting oral sex? Because I'm pretty sure she wouldn't be able to, like, say that very well with, you know... Maybe she's a a mouthful. Maybe she's a ventriloquist. (laughs) Either that or we're getting our names mixed up. I mean, I just... That that is... Again, there's the Mile High Club, and then there's that. Um, Gets better. What what would you call that? The 5-0 Club. The 5-0 Club? (laughs) Yeah, the 5-0. Noah, cops say, used his phone to memorialize Watkins pleasuring him. Can y'all hear me? She's sucking dick in the back of a state trooper right now. Noah exclaimed while recording. (laughs) When Noah later used FaceTime to talk with a friend, Watkins interjected, I just sucked his dick in the back of a patrol car. 
<laughs> How long did that cop leave him alone? I don't know. The sexual encounter was discovered an hour later when a patrolman reviewed the video footage of the couple in the police vehicle. Good God. It was discovered that the defendant had pe- performed an oral, se- oral sex on Noah. Trooper J.D. Perez Morales reported. Since Watkins had already been dropped off, the cop returned to the gas station and arrested her for lewd and lascivious behavior and breach of peace, both misdemeanors. She later bonded out of jail and scheduled for arraignment on December 16th. Noah, who was arrested after cops found marijuana and a controlled substance in his car, was also charged with lewd and lascivious behavior, breach of peace, and exposure of sexual organs. Free on bond, he is scheduled to be arraigned on December 13th. I can guarantee you that neither one of them cares at all about these charges. Of course not. I I half expected her to go, well, can I suck your dick? Get out of this? <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was actually surprised that she didn't ask to, like, you know, suck the cop's dick to, you know, she, but that would have, like, that would have been a felony. She may be an idiot, officers. but she has standards. <laughs> God, well, she may be an idiot, but she's not that much of an idiot. <laughs> that's harsh, man. That yeah. that's harsh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Send all your police trooper email too. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Mm-hmm. Oh man, just fucking in the back of a patrol car where they're obviously gonna be recording your ass. It's bad enough that you recorded yourselves. Like, fuck's sake. I would have been, I would have been totally impressed and totally uh, with them if they had both been handcuffed and managed this. Okay. I would have, I would have totally, totally waved the, you know, waved the, the cheerleader pom pom, you know, because you guys managed this in the back of a police car while handcuffed. Okay. That would have been. No, no, no. They weren't. They weren't handcuffed. I no, understand that's what you were saying. If, if, like, she had ma- if she had managed to like unzip his pants with her teeth and start collating him hands yeah. free, I would have been like, "All the win, Ev- all the win goes to this couple." <laughs> <laughs> right, you know. But no, this was this was you know the officer just didn't handcuff them and they just went at it. So no, okay, I, fine. Whatever. I think they were just gonna let them off with a warning because suspended license. Well, they were gonna let her off with a warning while he was gonna go to jail because he had the suspended license. So why they didn't handcuff him? That I don't fucking know. Uh, that's a good question. Oh god. <laughs> Um, well, because, like, the cop was just driving him to a location to see if they could pick up a fucking ride. Yeah. He was actually being, being really chill. This is like, I I know it's a bad, it's it's a bad uh, precedent, to, it's a bad example because, like, they did something bad without being restrained, but fuck's sake, like, if they're doing a non-violent offense and they just did something stupid, take them home or get them somewhere where they can arrange a ride rather than, you know, clogging up the goddamn criminal justice system with somebody uh, who's just driving on a suspended fucking license. Uh, agreed. Agreed. And, uh, yeah, it's, they, you know, the cop was totally cool about getting them home, but this is not something they should have done in return. <laughs> No, no, this was, that's <laughs> fucked up, man. That's not cool. Not cool, dude. Mm. Oh, man. Well, unfortunately, it's time for the happy fun times to end because this final article, this final article. Oh, God. Oh, we've had fun up until now, but this fucking guy, this fucking yes, guy. Yes, this man. fucking guy right here. We got a fucking asshole here. Oh, man. And it starts with a perfect quote. Give me my pizza! Tennessee man holds up pizza shop with AK-47 after being told his order would take ten minutes. He felt threatened by the pizza? No. No? No? Let me explain. This happened on November 24th, 2021. A Tennessee man is facing multiple charges of aggravated assault after he he held up a Little Caesars pizza store in Cedar Bluff with an AK-47 rifle after being told his pepperoni pie order 
would take 10 minutes to make. According to the news outlet, officers responded to the, res to the restaurant just after 9 p.m. Friday, where they were told that the suspect, identified as Charles Doty Jr., 53, became upset when he was told that his pepperoni pizza would take 10 minutes to make. He got upset and demanded a free breadstick order and went outside the business to wait for the pizza. When Doty Jr. returned, he had the rifle in hand and was pointing it at employees demanding his pizza immediately. Former Little Caesars employee Kimberly Smith, who was present at the time of the incident, told the station that she was, quote, taking care of a female customer and she was just getting ready to leave then he gets the gun. He pointed at me saying, Where is my damn pizza? I want my pizza. I was shocked it was all over a six dollar pizza. Mm -hmm. Doney Jr. was later arrested and taken to jail. It's not even good pizza. It's... It's okay-ish. It's okay-ish. It's stoner pizza. It's stoner pizza, it's, yeah. It's cheap-ass $5 pizza. Yes. Okay, definitely not worth the ammo you would use in that weapon. No. I, I love the fact that this article here uh, points out that Oh yeah, this year, Tennessee enacted what is known as a permitless carry law, which allows people to carry handguns without training or licensing. Yeah, handguns. What's an AK-47? Yeah, not a handgun. A long rifle. Yes. <laughs> you fail. Go back to school. Go back to school, Carl Anthony. <sighs> oh, fucking... Well, uh, 53. Old enough to know better. Old enough yeah. to know better and is pissed off that a pizza will take 10 minutes. Fucking ten minutes for a pizza. I ten think minutes is I reasonable. Think, I think we've seen the future of I. Th I think we've seen the future of Kyle the Murderer Rittenhouse. The uh, <sighs> less said about that fucking train wreck, the better. Just oh, it is a train wreck. It is a train wreck. Yeah. Fair enough. I walked into that one. Ah, oh, just it. It's, I, how can you even think about using a weapon to demand a pizza in the first place? Okay? Yeah, yeah this isn't yeah. fucking Mad Max, guys. What the yeah. fuck is this bartering system you got here? I'll give you all of this copper-coated lead at 500 rounds a minute for that $5 pizza. <laughs> I'm just thankful that Little Caesars is not like a full-on restaurant. It's It's... It's what I can describe as a pizza bar. Like, yeah. It's just a place you walk up, you order it's... a pizza, and then you walk out. It's a pizza yeah, counter. It's, it's a, a counter. Pizza it's a pizza counter. counter. That's all yeah. it is. You don't it's... sit down and eat. It, like... is, it is a mall. It is a mall outlet that is somehow not in a mall. Well, to be honest, like... <laughs> it started I, I, in a mall. <laughs> don't think I've ever seen a Domino's where you sit down and eat. Fair enough. Most pizza joints don't let you do that. I think... Oh, pizza, pizza I think Pizza Hut. Hut, yeah. Pizza Hut's probably the only one. Pizza Hut's probably the only one. Well, it's it, the, well, only, the, the only chain one. Like, there's yeah, the plenty of pizzerias one. that you will deliver, but you can also sit in them, but they're usually, but they're like locals. Anyway, they're getting off track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the point <laughs> is just fucking a 53-year-old man who is probably old enough to have grandchildren that are in diapers. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> God damn you people, shut up! Yeah, <laughs> Jesus trade, read the room. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but still, this this guy should be fucking, like, telling his kids, remember kids, patience is a virtue. Unless you're waiting for a pizza, in that case, blow the motherfuckers away! <sighs> oh, jeez. <sighs> oh, fuck. Oh, fucking hate these assholes. And they get, you know, and, and they're going to get worse. They're going to get I, worse. I, I, I hate to say it. They're going to get worse until until something happens. I they, don't know what has to happen. They but... think that because the world is slowly changing to a format where a majority of the time you can get shit quick, like through online shopping and online ordering and all that shit. They 
they're starting to believe that that extends to the real world where you can get shit almost instantaneously. Yeah, that's not what this is about. No, it's not. And that's not what Gray was talking about. Yeah. Oh, my uh, apologies. Then uh, what were you talking about? Uh, these people, these are the people, okay, that believe that they have every right, okay, to overwhelm whoever they're dealing with, okay, because they're old enough, all right, and the the universe owes them something, okay? They have decided that because they've been around long enough, okay, they are going to be able to resist the way the world is changing, okay? They've decided that they don't care what the world is, is turning into, okay? They're going to stick with the world they know, and the world they know says that power is everything, okay? Mm -hmm. that, that might is everything. And this is, it's never been true, ever, okay? Short of, like, you know, in ancient times when you're beating people over the head. And even then, you know, there were a lot of ways to not have to do that. You know, but they're, that's, that's the idea that they've got stuck in their head. You know, they, they think that, that, that because it's always been, you know, whoever is the strongest can beat the crap out of everybody else. It's always going to be that way. And, and I do, I do hate to say it, but like, I know this particular gentleman isn't necessarily a boomer. Um, he's, he's still in this, he's still in the same age range of that gap of where like the boomers <laughs> were kind of running into the next generation and influencing them a little bit. Yep. And one of the big problems with that is, is that and I hate to say this about my own parents' generation. They were insanely spoiled. Like they like to say, Oh, you kids are so no, fuck you. You were spoiled. You were spoiled with the greatest econ the greatest post-war economy that this nation's ever seen. And then you, you fucked had, it. You, you guys didn't, you guys almost wanted for nothing. You mm -hmm. guys, you could get a job, a single job and you could pay for everything you could go to college on a very affordable amount of money. And it, it, we did. We saw the biggest spike in college graduates across the country from that generation. We had a, a, like a massive amount of resources, like goods and services were being made in the U.S. Everything was affordable. Everybody got paid well. There wasn't really too many issues to deal with. And then it got fucked. But you were, they were spoiled. They didn't have soup lines, mass soup lines like nope. their parents' generation did before the war. Their grandparents had lived through the Great Depression. Their grand great grandparents lived through the First World War and the Great Depression. Right. They went through World War II, and they came out of that fucked up. But because of that sacrifice, we had a fantastic economy and a fantastic you know, global power set, and they reaped the benefits. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Absolutely reap the benefits. But they got so spoiled that they thought, well, it's going to be like this for everyone and fuck anyone else who says different. They didn't get any reality at all. And they still deny it to this day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why you have people like this. They are close enough to that generation, to the previous one who says, well, because I'm the right, per because I believe I'm right, that means I am. Yeah. Sorry about the rant. It's all right. It's it's something that needs to be said. Oh, boy, just fucking... Well, it. we have to pay our rant every now and then. We do. Anyway, I think that's it for this week's episode, folks. We had some fun times and some angry times, and that's pretty much the name of the game here on the train wreck. Don't forget stupid times. Don't forget stupid. Yeah, don't forget stupid. Always stupid times. Always, Always. stupid. Thanks for listening, folks, to this episode of Trademarks Trainwreck, a show featured on Celestia Radio, all fandom all the time. With me here has been Random Greymane. Purveyor of goldfish for my daughter. <laughs> mm. And Sherlock. I guess we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. As always, our theme song was created by Merivex, and our banner art was created by Court Awesome. You can find their social media, our social media, and all the links to all the articles in the description below in the YouTube iteration of this episode, where I humbly ask that you like, comment, subscribe, all that garbage before the algorithm chews me up and spits me out like the filth that I am. And as always, my name is Trademark, and good night. Loop. Bloop. Bloop. <laughs>